Oh my gosh, I did forget part of it, didn't I? Hmm. So I brought Graham in here because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? So, um, it was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, he did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Right? Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise. Chris, I, 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 I know. Just stop. It's time. I just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I don't, I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I can tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today. And you knew I was going to find out because I told you that. And then you continued to stay knowing that you could, at the end, say, you know what? I just need to get this off my chest. Like, I just need to tell you what happened. We're not, we're not here to play games. We're not here to do any of that with you. We just want to know what happened. So can you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? Everything that I've, t I've told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now, like, I did not it's, it's not I even it's not even an option right now because no, no. you did not pass the polygraph, no, no. so I know you were being deceptive. So that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that. I've... I know. I know you want to tell us. I, I can. I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I know this. Like okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up. Like if yeah, but you kind of are because in in no, it's normal. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are gonna go. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. It's just like if you ask your kid, you know, did you write on the wall? And they go, no. And you're like, I, you have marker on your hand. Like I know you just wrote on the wall. And they're like, oh okay. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like... But you know they're not coming back home. You know I, that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm... I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. Uh, I hope they come back home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know they're not coming back home. Chris, Timmy and I are confused. Okay. And here's what we're confused about. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah. I told you that we've got a lot of beliefs. Mm -hmm. Okay, that wasn't a lie. Uh -huh. We know a lot more than you think we do. Okay. And here's where we're confused. You're this great guy. I'm not just telling you that, okay? I'm telling you that because everyone tells us that, okay? We can't find anyone to say anything bad about you. Chris is a great guy. He's a good father. He's a good man. We're confused as to why you're not taking care of your beautiful children. I'm not taking care of them right now. Right now. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. Honestly, I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth.
so if you talk about your family. We just can't figure out why there's two Chris's. Okay. We talked about that last night. Yes. We just can't figure it out. There's a Chris. Okay. If somebody asked me my first child routine, I would say, I don't know, go after mom. That's the truth, right? And so it is very surprising to me and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning. And you know just what to put in there. And you know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident. Okay? You know what the clothes to put in there. You know what they have for breakfast. You know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your daughters. Okay? I know you love them. And you're not faking that, are you? That's real. Okay? There's a lot of guys who come in here and try to tell me that. And I know they're lying. Okay? Because they can't answer those questions that you can answer. Okay? But you are in here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? About your daughter. I know. And this is very good. Keep I, 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 I'm not proud of it. I, I don't think anything like that could happen. I don't think I would ever do it, but I did. I know. Keep going. She accused me of it. I denied it. Like, I had she on her, and I feel horrible for it. Like, she was pregnant, and it was, I don't want to, I didn't hurt her. I cheated on her, I hurt her emotionally. I cheated on her. And I feel absolutely horrible about this, but that's what I've been holding, I think that. When I, I didn't go to the Rockies game, I was with her. Okay. I went to dinner with her. Okay. Keep going. That five weeks I was alone, I was with her most, most of the time. Okay. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. I'm going to tell you I fell out of love because I fell in love with her. Absolutely. I mean, that's God's honest truth. Okay. Who is her? I, I don't want to get her involved in this. I don't want to ruin her life. Like, it's something, something like this. I don't want her involved in this. Okay. So can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. I knew that you would say you didn't want to get her involved. But I just think if I... Because you'd like to take care of She's a wonderful person. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she knew I was married, yes. And I told her we were going through issues. Yes. yes. And I told her that, you know, we were going to get, you know, at the end, like, we are going to get separated. Like, once I figured out what that was, yeah. I didn't know what that was going to be. I know. I had no idea. I, I like, you know, I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. I know. I know you think I'm a favorite. But, um, like, but, like, it was, I never felt that way about anybody. Like, Anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Chris, that's not your fault. No, I'm, I'm, I, I no, 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 I'm just... Well, I'm, can we do this? Um, I know you want to take care of her because you, it's because you're a type of guy who takes care of women. It is. You took care of your wife, you took care of your daughters, you were very good at taking care and you want to take care of her. So can we make a deal? I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody. But I can't walk out of here wondering. So can we leave her out of it? Okay. And get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like I didn't know like Chris, what I did Chris, I know, Chris, in the interview today, you weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about That was I was holding back from last night. That's when not why you failed today. That's not how that works. You would have reactions to every single question, not just the ones that we talked about being important. Like the ones you wanted me to lie about, I like, is that what you're talking about? No, the ones about her disappearance mm -hmm. and knowing where she's at and about what you, about seeing her last. I was not lying about those things. So, can I tell you what I think? Yes. Okay. 
So I'm going into that interview today with Tammy where we strapped you in. We knew we knew all about Nikki. Okay? All about her. And you're doing a very good job right now because you didn't have to tell us about her, but you did. Uh, I could hold that in anyone. I know. I, we, could, we could see it in your chest, I can. in your eyes. Okay. Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Nikki, and so we didn't need to ask you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew. Okay. And so that's why we didn't ask you, because we already knew the answer. Okay. We're very, very worried about your daughters and your wife. I am too. Okay. So can I tell you, maybe um, based on the people that I've talked to, and Tammy's talked to, Based on all the investigations we've done, based on your cell phone, both your cell phones, your wife's cell phone, Nikki's cell phone, okay? Based on talking with family members and friends and based on talking with everyone. Here's what we know, okay? And I'm not going to lie to you right now. Here's what we know, okay? Chris is a good man. Everyone said it. Okay, I'm not just telling you that because I, you know, want to blow smoke here. You're a good man, okay? Nobody can fake answers about packing a backpack. Nobody. You either pack a backpack for your kids or you don't. Okay? This should have been the happiest time of your marriage. Okay? You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit, okay? Well, this should have been a time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive, okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can't, okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, whoa, buddy. Okay? A woman that lets her man do all of the backpack packing and all of the cooking. I do all the cooking, but yeah. she cooks like five yeah. or like some things here and there. Okay. That's because you're a good person. And I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Okay. And the other thing I think is interesting is, even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. Now that's the reason why we want to give you an opportunity today to just help us find them. Okay. Will you do that for us? I'll do whatever I can to help them find them where they're at. Okay. So when she asked you, do you know where they are? Or are you going to tell the truth about where they are? We feel miserable. Okay. Why? I'm, I'm a nervous person. Like every question I asked, every question it felt like I did. I wouldn't even say the right thing. That's not how the polygraph works. I don't like. I don't know like what it reads like. Through, I know she was saying about autonomy of of the process, but like I don't know where they're at. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He flew across the country to help you. Okay. You're lying to him. You're lied to everyone you talk to. And they all bought it. Will you please help us find your babies? I want to find them. I've told you over and over, I want to find everyone. Can we go back to that night? Yeah. You know that we have texts. And we know that there's an Alexa in your house. Mm -hmm. And you know that those are trained to record distress. Okay. You know that we know the 
the content of Nikki's text messages and your text messages and Shanann's text messages. Okay. I didn't know you were Nikki was until tonight right now, so Okay. Tell us about that night again. And please tell the truth this time. Uh, I, I told you the truth. I, um, I promise I told you the truth. Like, we woke up at 4 o'clock. I woke up at 4 o'clock. Got dressed, got ready. 4.15, and she didn't talk. About the house, about separation. Did you guys talk about Nikki? She, she accused me of, like, all right, like, you know, is there somebody else? Sure. I didn't say it. You denied it? Yeah. Okay. Because she brought up, like, you know, like, well, was there a $68 dollars charge that I'm in the other night? Okay. Was there two of you? And then was with two of you, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That's me. Okay. So it sounds like at that time there was maybe you weren't quite ready to just say, Sign I this, this is everything. everything. I couldn't. I couldn't say it. Okay. And we were trying hard enough. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't say that. Okay. What did you say? I just told her, like, oh, this separation has to go. I want a separation. Okay. Was there an idea to sell the house of yours? She initiated the realtor the week before in an email. Why? Because we were talking about we, the marital issues. She's like, well, we can't live, afford to live on our own. Well, she can't afford to live on her own. I can't afford to live on my own. So she's like, we need to. She contact Ann. Okay. She, and who'd you contact? Well, she contacted Ann, our realtor. Ann? Yeah. Okay. Would Ann say the same thing that your wife con- initiated the contact? Yeah. Okay. She would. And then on Monday, I was, I texted her to see if she could, what she could do. Okay. And that's in there too. You probably already knew that. Tell me about the pregnancy. Is that your idea or hers? She said it was about, she was about 80-20. Well, I was about, I went to the pros and cons of it. Like, after she got, after she got pregnant, she told everybody that it was mainly my idea. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I wanted a boy. Did you want to get pregnant? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, after the fact, she said it was mainly me that wanted it, and she was about, you know, she was 70 30 against it at that point. Like, she would tell her friends that. Yeah. And I was just like, what, 70 30 against it? Like, why? <laughs> Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense? Okay. How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I have I have nothing on my hands that's I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. So tell me what happened then. I believe you that you did nothing on your hands. What happened? When I left, I mean, it's on video that I left and no, I was in my truck. I didn't like load anything into my truck besides my tools, my container, my book bag, my water jug, my lunchbox. Okay. But then what happened? I drove out of the driveway. No, before you drove out of the driveway. What happened with your wife and your kids? I didn't do anything with them. They were still in the house. Where are they? Where did they go? I don't know, sir. I really don't know. Your wife's not the type of person to vanish. I know she's not. She had 10 things on her schedule that meant she was going to be there the next day, that day, the yeah. day after that, with friends, with a doctor. Okay? She didn't leave because she wanted to. Right. That's what happened. I didn't do anything to her or the kids. Was she an accident? I didn't do anything. Was she an accident? There was no accident. I don't know if there was an accident in the house. I wasn't there for it. It's a big deal if it's an accident, because we can work with that, Chris. No. And I think no, that's maybe what happened. There's no, I did not cause an accident. I didn't do anything to my wife and kids. Was it a misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding. Like, we had that talk. There was a misunderstanding where I, I didn't tell her about the affair. Okay. I didn't. That, okay. that was the misunderstanding. Like, sure. Miscommunication. Yeah, misunderstanding. Yeah. Good. But I probably should have told her right then. Honestly. 
I mean, everything was out on the table anyways, right? I should have just told her right then. But I didn't because I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. What was your plan? What were you going to do? I mean, how was the separation going to work? Like, once we got separated, I would get my own place, and then we, I mean, 50 50 split with the kids, I was hoping. Mm-hmm. What about Nikki? Take it slow and see if, you know, if anything develops, like, when I'm, you know, at my own place. I just, I just find it hard that hear you talk about just having this emotional, you know, conversation with Shanann and you're bawling and crying together and you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. No, not one. And I, help me understand that because I don't get it. You're, these are your baby girls and you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I, 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 I lose my four year old in the store for 10 seconds and I start to go panic. Panic. I have not seen any of that from you at all. Help me understand I, that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. Is I, that I, weird? I, 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 don't, don't look into that like I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're, you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that your two little baby girls. I'm hoping are they're still around some I'm hoping they're still somewhere. Jimmy, alive. you don't have them right now. You're not reading stories to them at night. I know. You're not giving them midnight snacks. You're not giving them their medicine. You're not waking up with them in the morning. I know this. Like I So that I, should cause you pain. It does cause me pain. But I don't see that. I, I don't see that. I want to I, see I, the Chris that cares. I want to see I, the Chris that you know, feels bad about what he did and wants to, you know, get this off his chest and be done with this and let us find your little girls so that they're not out there in the middle of a field or whatever somewhere. Like, don't do that. I, I love those girls to death. Then show us that. Show us that. Show us this, Chris. I'm not this, Chris. I'm not, I'm not showing you that. I'm, I'm showing you the Chris that cares about his girls and his wife. Just because I haven't shed a tear, it shouldn't make you feel like I haven't, that the love isn't there for them. It's weird. It doesn't make sense. I understand that. You you have to. I I, I, I totally see where you're coming from. Trust me, like, there's nothing. Just because I. Chris, people can be pushed to the point where they do something that they regret. It happens every single day. I know. But But part of what makes you a man is the guy that goes really fucked up but this is what I did and I'm going to pay for what I did and I'm going to tell you what I did and I'm going to be honest about it Chris we can keep talking to you once we find these girls okay so once we find these girls and your wife right no matter how we find them no matter what condition they're in we can keep talking to you you can tell us guys it's not as bad as it looks and you can say let me tell you what happened? I was never comfortable with you, Graham, or with you, Tammy. I wasn't comfortable yet. But now that everything's known, now that the girls are found and Shanann's found, however they're found, it's okay. We can keep talking to you. Okay. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I, I have no clue. No, you would have known because they didn't leave the house. Like, well, did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? <laughs> They were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. They were there. The only way they could have left is in your truck. There's no way, because, like, I didn't just throw them in, in my truck. But they, you know your truck is GPS. Yes. Right? Yes. Because you told your boss, like, yes. hey, I'm going to separation. I'm going to be staying yes. at a friend's house, whatever. You know that thing pings every 10 seconds? Yep. So we will know exactly where you went. And your company's giving that to us. I know. Okay. Are we not asking the right questions, Chris? 
You're asking all the questions. All the questions. What are we not asking you right? What What are we doing wrong? We're not doing anything wrong. Did she do something? If she did anything to these kids. We both love them with all our hearts. There's no way. It could have been an accident. Something happened in the house that you know about. You failed the polygraph test, Chris. This is not about, did you leave and your wife vanish and you didn't know anything about it? That was not what you were asked, okay? Okay. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know, did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you got to tell us. There's something that happened to these baby girls. Look at them. I know. Before you came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I have no doubt. But we make mistakes. That's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Chris, it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What are you thinking about? She couldn't have. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Which one of these has the breathing thing? Well, they both have inhalers, but she, she has the EOE. Encephalitis up and Did she have problems breathing? I mean, probably like well, with her allergies and whatnot, if she had anything next, but she's had she's one with the endoscopies and everything in the surgeries I told you about. Do you think she had trouble breathing that night? And she had freaked out? You didn't want to live without her baby girl? So. Did you hear about the homicide that happened in Aurora? Where the guy beat that family to death with a ball and hammer? Mm-hmm. Only person that survived was a three year old sibling. And that sibling grew up to be a total mess. No family, no mom and dad. My brother's sister, just so by herself. She says, I wish I would have died with them. And there are times that people freak out. I've seen it. I mean, I've been in law for almost 20 years. I've seen it. Parents freak out, and they're like, oh, my God. Like, I can't have my baby girls live without each other. They're best friends. Like twins, they're, you know, they wake each other up in the morning. And I understand that. We had a mom in Castle Rock that suffocated both her baby girls. She's like, I just, my husband was going to take them. And she's like, I just couldn't, just couldn't handle I thought I was doing right by them. I thought I was saving them pain. And I get it. Why? Why she saving them pain? Because she didn't want them to have to live without their mom. Chris, this is a weight that's going to be on you for the rest of your life until we resolve tonight. Unless we can talk about this more tonight, this is going to follow you forever. I promise you, when you start talking to us, you will feel better. I know you already feel better about getting the Nikki off your chest. Please tell me. Please tell me. Like, involve her in this or anything like that. She can't do that. You gotta help me. I know. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. Did they look like this tonight? The last night you were with them? She had that dress on. Like, 
from the eight, and then it wasn't in this that she had that dress on. So I remember I had the two buttons on the back. I take them off so I get her pajamas on that night. Did you guys make sure they were warm when you left the house? Make sure they were warm. And they're they're always warm. they they always have when they're in the beds they're always warm. Okay. Are you guys taking care of them at the very end? Or they're always they're they're always taken care of. They're always they never miss a meal. She took them out of the house with their blankets and their animals. That's because you cared. That's why caring dad does. I mean, I'm always caring for these kids. There's no, nothing in this in this world or my life. I believe that. I believe that, and I believe. Someone made a mistake whether it was you, you or Shanann. And you either cleaned up after Shanann or you made the mistake and... I mean, I want to believe that maybe Shanann did it and you felt compelled to fix this so Shanann didn't look bad. That's what I, that's what I want to believe. But I don't know, you're not telling me that, so it makes me think the worst, like... Did you? I did not do all three of them. I did not do anything with these kids. Not do anything. What did she need to do? Tell us, Chris. Chicks are crazy. Can I have talk to my dad or something? Absolutely. Come. Do you want to bring him in here? No. I just can't talk to my dad. Like, flew across the country. Chris, how about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? I just go talk to him. I've been here for like five, six hours and I'm like, absolutely. Chris, look at me, man. It's not going to feel any better. He deserves an answer. It's your best friend. There's only one person you wanted here most, and it's your dad. Chris. What would you tell him? I, I love him, and I don't. I just, I just want him to be by my side. Okay. He knows more than we do that you're a good man. And he knows as much as you want to protect your wife, Shema. I think he would tell you to do the right thing. Before we get him, can I go out there and talk to him? Well, I don't know that you want to do it out there because there's a lot of people going through the halls. Should we bring him in here? I'll we'll step out. Okay. Can you need a few minutes with him? Okay. okay. Can we just ask a couple more questions? It seems like you're about to get her off your chest. Is there any way that you can help us understand more about Shania and why maybe something happened? So that we don't get a bad picture about her. And what I mean is, what happened that night with her? As far as after I talked to her, with the girls. Like when we were having that conversation in bed there. Mm -hmm. like when, I, when I talked to her about the separation and the house and mm -hmm. she asked me about the affair and, mm -hmm. and that's that's how that conversation went. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, she was distraught. She, she had like mascara on her face, all that. I mean, it, was, it was emotional. Well, how about this? If we bring in your dad, Will you promise me that you'll talk to him? I'll talk to him. Okay. Will you promise me that you'll tell him everything? Would it be easier if you told him and he told us? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's going to be easier or not. I tend to think it's not. I think you're the type.
type of guy that needs to take responsibility because you always have taken responsibility. You've always made the right choice. So I guess I'm just worried that if we bring your dad in here, that could distract you. What do you think? Distract me from like, talking to you? Yeah. I, I, just, I just need to talk to him. Okay. All right. I know you'll do the right thing. I do. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I think that you need to think a little bit more about that. Okay. And you need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are his child. And he will not stop loving you. Never. Never. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay. He's been here the whole time. You know, he, he didn't want to leave you. Have you ever seen, uh, sometimes when an animal's owner dies, they stick around forever? I think that's your dad. Poor guy didn't want to leave today, okay? So, keep that in mind. He wants to hear it all.
Hey, Chris, we're going to you have uh, however much time you need, okay? Sure. Can we have us in there? No. Uh, yeah. Yes.
You really know this is going to work. She freaked out over the separation of them. I don't think it's she laid back down for about something downstairs, but I heard a little cool commotion upstairs, but I didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. And then we went back upstairs and she just. No. I can see that she was on that. I was choking her for Did she kill him? No. Her book. Her book. Yes. She took the book from the dead. I freaked out when she me. I was like, I was like, I was like, I think I might call the cops about it. So they want to be one of the bodies off or something? I mean, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't freak out. I didn't know what else to do. I know she knew about the affair. She just was waiting for me to say something to me to deny it again. I think she was lost it. Uh, so she went off and told her about it. That's when the crying like happened. And So when he told her about her, told her about her, 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 Yes, 
بیشتر مقرر اون که Help us not do this with you, okay? Can you tell us what you told your dad? After that conversation, after that conversation we had, and she accused me of the affair, and she, in her heart, she knew what was going on. And she knew about the dinner the other night. It was too much for just me. She knew about one now. When I told her I went to a Rocky game, oh. and I went out to bed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went downstairs. And that's right. You told her about the separation. Well, I, I, that was when I was upstairs in bed. Oh. And to her, you know. What I wanted in the call of separation. That's what I want. I went downstairs and started packing up a few things and I heard a couple of things upstairs, but I didn't think anything of it. Continued this own thing. Get ready to get everything packed up. I 
Did the hard part? Hmm. I have left the details for that. You have to get mad at all. They're gone. There's no bringing them back. Well, where are they? I 
I didn't know what to do. I know. I didn't know what to do. Like none of this, none of this made sense. Why would she hear from my fucking girls? So of course, were they in something? Were they under the ground? Like, where would you find them? Did you pick out there? I thought there's no one else out there. I mean, I will if you want to. I don't want to. What if we, uh, what if you and me and your dad just drove by and you could just say, right there, we could help you just get him out of the cold? You know, take care of him for the last time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you are. I know you came in today to do the right thing. You didn't have to come in. You came in all now. Did you ever go into the balance room? Mm-hmm. Just put your back in. That's no. That's our under The way she was laying, the bed just sprawled out. That one packed up the special stuff. So where'd you put them? Put them out there. In the truck. Which part? Driver's side rear. In the passenger compartment? Driver's side in the rear. Okay, I'm not seeing. There's the babies are gone. And uh, I put my hands around my wife's neck and did that same thing. Did she and fight back at all? The rage that I had after seeing that, I, not much. How do you know she's almost dead? 
What will they do? Right. Anything that I would do from there was just going to be just this person, just insensitive and just a horrible thing. You were in a tough spot, and I was like, what can you do, right? Sometimes your body just kind of takes uh, over. The, What's going to happen? We're going to help him get out of there. Do you prefer, like, would you prefer that when you're one of your coworkers? Oh my god, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I cannot have that. You said that the everybody thinks I'm a good man. They're gonna say this. You're gonna be like, what the fuck did you do, Chris? Like, why did like, you just go to college to begin with? Well, they weren't in your shoes. They don't know. I don't. They weren't living your life. I know, but still, it's like people are gonna. I can never like. like <laughs> we'll just go little steps at a time. How about that? I, I can't have anybody show you out there. Let anybody no coworkers, please. Okay. I mean, they're, this is, they're just going to form their own opinions anyways once they figure everything out anyway. <laughs> we'll just take all those steps tonight then. How about that? Do you have to have any of them with you? No. No. We can prefer you. Can you and me and Tammy and Ronnie get in the car and just drive out there? You just point it? Chris, I know they're gone, but they're still your babies, and you're still their dad. And you don't want them out there. I don't want them out there. <laughs> and you don't want someone else to find them out there. You don't, I promise you. Give us a second so we can kind of get some things arranged. Okay. Do that. Okay. Ronnie, do you mind staying in here with him?
I've always said she was the most evil person, but I never thought in a million, million, million years that could happen. I mostly drove her to do something stupid.
She knew about the separation before, or whether she couldn't get lost that long. Because she knew it was an affair. She knew. And I denied her once again.
call the police for this in, in America. This ruined your life, ruined my life, ruined it. Ruined me. Ruined Jamie's life, and ruined the company of friends like that supports me. I don't know. I've ruined everything.
I knew it was going to happen coming here today. Now I've never taken a polygraph before, but I know what was going to happen. Just a matter of time.
They have it locked. Yeah.
Yeah. I'm going to text my daughter and have her go to my house before my wife goes out. This ain't going to be on duty anytime soon. No, no, not tonight. Not tonight. I can't imagine it's not now. I, mean, I don't really have much say in that, but I can't, I can't see that. Do you want me to take you out to the lobby and you can go to the bathroom and then text your wife and stuff, talk to them? I want to go outside. Yeah, I'm going to go outside. Okay. Just watch the press people around. Yeah, we're going to try to do our best to make sure that we, uh, you know, we don't stand to gain anything by broadcasting any of this. That's not what law enforcement is ever really about. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try our best to handle that as discreetly as possible. But they're pretty good at what they do, too. So I'm not around here either, are you? Uh, I've only been here a few years. Okay. Yeah. Don't find a lawyer or something, or not a public defender, but somebody else. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Did you get your phone? Okay. Let's go this way. All right, we'll go.